I'm gonna show you how to draw some complicated Lewis structures that you will need to master for organic chemistry. This is a sneak peek from my Organic Chemistry One course that can be found on community.com. I'm gonna start off again, same way I did before with that CH3. And I know that, okay, carbon is bonded to three hydrogens and that's then bonded to the carbon next to it. So there's a carbon here. The question now is, do we place carbon next to the oxygen and is this hydrogen bonded to only the carbon or is it also bonded to the oxygen? I want you to get familiar whenever you start to see the CHO. That's gonna be completely different from seeing OH, okay? Now, I'm gonna start off with showing you if you thought that this was oxygen bonded to the hydrogen. So if you thought that this was oxygen bonded to hydrogen. I'm gonna keep placing everything that we typically would place. I know oxygen would have lone pairs here. There would be a lone pair here and a lone pair here. I know that because oxygen has six valence electrons, there's one electron here, one electron here, so that's two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, now I'm gonna double check if all of the carbons and all of the atoms that need to have that octet rule followed are actually following it. And the ones that need that are carbon and oxygen. So this carbon is following it because it has four bonds, but this carbon is not. There's only two bonds, so there's only four valence electrons. So this doesn't follow the octet rule. This structure would be incorrect because of that reason. I can't say that the OH, that oxygen is bonded to hydrogen. Instead, we're gonna do this a little bit differently. And I'm instead gonna say, okay, maybe it's just the oxygen that is bonded to that carbon. And hydrogen is also bonded to that carbon. And that would be correct. Whenever you see the CHO, that is actually saying that this oxygen is bonded to the carbon and this hydrogen is bonded to the carbon. Oxygen and hydrogen are not bonded to each other. That's only when you see OH. That's when they're bonded to each other. Now we're not done yet. Carbon still doesn't follow that octet rule. So I'm gonna just show our electrons and we know these electrons would move and they would form a double bond. No, it doesn't matter which electrons, which lone pairs I chose to form that double bond. So as long as I erase one of them, and form that double bond, that's fine. Also, it doesn't matter if I decided to place the, this double bonded oxygen on the bottom, as long as there's only one. Uh, typically, you will see it on the top, but we're gonna be moving it around as we go throughout uh, organic chemistry. But this would be the correct structure. I know that because everything follows the octet rule that it should, right? This carbon now has four bonds or a total of eight valence electrons. Here's two, four, six, and eight. Moving on to the next part. So this next one can also look a little bit different. So you could either see this sort of chemical formula look like this, or it could say HCOOH, since this is just the expanded portion of this O2. And there's a clue for you right there. We see OH. So I know that oxygen will be bonded to hydrogen. So starting this off, this is already kind of telling me how things will be bonded somewhat. So if we were to just draw this all out, there's carbon, they're all bonded to each other. And if we left it here, let's see if this would be correct. First off, I know that our oxygens need to have these lone pairs. And that's something I want you to get used to is if you were to see, let's say, oxygen just single bonded to something, that would then look like this, where it has three lone pairs. If oxygen is bonded to two different things, then that has two lone pairs. If oxygen is double bonded, then, and it's on its own as we saw before, that also has two lone pairs, and so on. So that's something that I want you to get comfortable with and just quickly be able to spot how many lone pairs will be on oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and so on. Okay, so going back to this, carbon is not happy 
because it's not following the octet rule right now, and it needs to. Let's see, if I were to place, maybe move this and make a double bond, let's see if that'll make it happy. So move this, that's now a double bond. Well, we only have two, four, six electrons. Nope, still not happy. Okay, what if I were to move these electrons as well and then form a triple bond? Let's try it. If this moves and that now forms a triple bond, well, carbon is technically happy because it does have a full octet. This oxygen, not sure, two, four, six, eight. Yeah, that forms an octet. And the last thing I would say I'd want to check is the formal charges. So I'm going to start off with finding the formal charges of carbon. So formal charges of carbon, we know our valence electrons are four. I'll subtract that by how many actual electrons are currently bonded. So there's one, two, three, four, and that's zero. Okay, that's happy. Next, I'll do the next oxygen that is next to that carbon. So formal charge of oxygen. I know, let's see how many bonding we have. There's one, two, three, four. So there's four. Let's start off with six valence electrons minus the four electrons on that oxygen. So that's a positive two. Positive two, okay. I'm gonna stop right there. And the reason why I would stop right there is because remember our guidelines stated that the most electronegative element wants to either be zero, if it can be, or negative. It did not say it wanted to be positive. And our most electronegative atom is oxygen. However, if that's positive, that's incorrect. It's not gonna be stable and that's telling us, you know what, the structure is incorrect. We can redraw this a different way. And that's exactly true. This is not how we would draw this out. We would not actually place everything laid out. So I'm gonna erase this and I'm gonna show you how this would look. This is another one that I want you to get familiar with. And it's specifically when we start to see this part. So COOH, or it can be written this way. So I'll start off with just carbon again, and that's still bonded to hydrogen. There's nothing wrong with that. The places where it was wrong was just how oxygens were uh, bonded. They're not bonded to each other. They're only bonded to carbon. So I only have one oxygen here, one oxygen here, and then that's bonded to the hydrogen since I saw that OH at the end. So that's that OH at the end. Okay. Now I'm going to place all of the electrons. So there's two, four, six, and there's only two lone pairs. Carbon again needs a full octet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off here. So I'll start off here, and the reason why I know to automatically start changing this structure or forming a double bond here instead of this one is because of the formal charges. So I'm gonna find the formal charge of this top one first. So formal charges, of oxygen, I'm gonna say one. That's valence electrons is six minus however many electrons it currently has. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This has a negative one formal charge. I'll do the formal charge for the second oxygen now. So that's six valence electrons minus however many we actually have. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. That has a formal charge of zero. Which one is most preferred? The neutral formal charge. So because that has a formal charge of zero, I know that I'm gonna leave it alone. I don't wanna touch that, it's happy. Instead, I wanna change this negative one to potentially be zero. And that's exactly what you're doing there. When you're moving these electrons, a lone pair, to form a double bond, you're gonna have a formal charge of zero. So that makes it even more stable, so Let's move this lone pair and form this as a double bond. That would be the correct structure. So let's erase this. So something to know for your formal charges, since before I showed you uh, how the bonding is and how many lone pairs there would be, I want you to get familiar with the formal charges and how you can quickly see that as well. This has a formal charge of zero. Same with a double bonded oxygen with two lone pairs. That has a formal charge of zero. 
our single bonded oxygen with three lone pairs has a formal charge of negative one. So this would be negative one, formal charge of zero, formal charge of zero. This one should make sense that they both have a formal charge of zero because there's two bonds here, and then this is a double bond. There's two lone pairs. There's two lone pairs here. Okay, so I want you to start getting quick at this and just being able to quickly find and spot the formal charges. Eventually, when you do enough of these, you just tend to remember what the formal charges would be since you see this so often. All right, let's do this next one. I have more videos just like this one on community.com.